Hey everybody, new chapter, section 10.1. We are going to be doing parallelograms and triangles. We're going to be actually looking at areas of uh, many different figures here in this chapter. So getting back into uh, actual problems that involve uh, numbers and math and that sort of thing. So uh, we will be looking again, parallelograms, triangles, and finding the area. All right, we'll get into all the vocab, base, altitude, height for parallelograms and for triangles. So here we go. Starting with a rectangle. We know that the area of a rectangle is the product of its base times its height. So of course area is how much, basically how much ground a figure covers. So hopefully you remember this from your previous education that whatever we have here, that amount of space is given to us by the base times the height for a rectangle. Okay, past knowledge, but well, let's change it over now. Taking that same rectangle right up here, all right? Same formula here. Now, let's look at that rectangle, but we're going to do a little magic on it here. I'm going to take one corner off and move it to the other side. Now, I haven't changed the area at all. I didn't subtract anything or delete anything. I just moved a hunk of it from one spot to another, and I created a parallelogram. Area didn't change. Therefore, this proves that for a parallelogram, we have the same area here as we did here. All right? So, the formula for the area of a parallelogram is going to be also base times height. Nothing changed. So, there it is. Area of a parallelogram is a product of its base times its height. Now, keep in mind a base can be any one of the four sides. Of course, we've got this one labeled as a base, but we could also just as easily consider this to be the base. And for both of those, the height is the perpendicular distance between one base and the other. All right. However, we can also consider this to be the base. If I were to get rid of some of this stuff, okay, and... All right, let's put it this way. Just basically rotate this around. Okay, is it easy now to see how the short side could also be considered to be a base? And if that's a base, then the height would still be the perpendicular distance, okay, from the opposite side down to a line containing the base. Okay, let's put that red. Okay. And show you the line containing the base. Right here. And they are perpendicular. Okay, so in this case, the base and the height are uh, different values, but are still going to give us the same area. We didn't change the figure. We just changed what we considered to be the base and what we considered to be the height. So kind of important that we were, were able to look at these things in uh, several different ways. Okay. Right there and this now, of course, is the height. Okay, so whether we look at it one way or the other, uh, remember the base could be any one of the four sides, but the height is the length of an altitude, which is a segment perpendicular to the line containing a base, but it's between the, the, the from, from the side opposite the base, so the perpendicular distance between the two bases. All right, so that means Here's a picture of the same parallelogram with the base and the height represented in several different ways. Okay, now we have problems that are going to make us look at these things in different ways. So what's the area of each parallelogram? First couple are going to be fairly easily easy. Base is 5, height is 4, area is 20 square inches. Now remember for area, our units turn from plain old inches here to square inches. Okay, this one's also going to be fairly easy, the far right. Base is 12, the length of that altitude is 25. Okay, 
Now this one's a little different. We're going to have to look at it kind of sideways because they give us a height, but it's not the height drawn the same way, same orientation as the first two problems. We consider that 10 to be the base, 13 to be the height. All right. It's almost as if we're taking this figure and turning it sideways, if that helps us to see it. Right. So that the 10 meter side is the base, 13 meters is the height. Okay, so sometimes we're going to have to look at it in an odd way. This is a perfect example. Sometimes we're going to have to do both. All right, book loves this kind of problem. Find the value of x. All right, well, we know x times 9.4 would give us the height, uh, give us the area, because okay? there's a base, and x is the height, the altitude that corresponds to that base. However, we can't look, just go ahead and solve x because we don't know the area, or do we? We do, because if we look at this thing sideways, turn it around this way, we see that there's a 13-inch base with a 9-inch height. Okay, that will give us the area, and when we have the area, we can go ahead and solve for the, uh, uh, for the uh, length of x. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll take the area using this base and this height, we'll find our area is 117. Now that we have 117, we can look at the second base and the second height and solve for x. Still got base equals, uh, area equals base times height, and now we're working our way backwards to solve for x. x comes out to be 12.4. So sometimes we gotta look at the problem both ways. Here's one that's in words. Pause, go ahead and think about it. All right, so a parallelogram has sides 15 and 18, height corresponding to the 15 inch base is nine, and the height corresponding to the 18 inch base is what we need to find. So I just drew a picture. Once again, I don't care about its accuracy so much as I just need something to look at. So the 15 inch base corresponds to a nine inch, uh, 15 centimeter base corresponds to a nine centimeter height, and the 18 centimeter base corresponds to this height here, right? So same kind of problem as the last one that we did. We're going to use base times height with the 15 inch base and the, nine, the 15 centimeter base and the 9 centimeter height. Find the area is 135. Since the area is 135, it also equals 18 times x. Solving for x, we find it's 7.5. Good. Now triangles. Uh, notice how we can take a triangle, and if I take triangle and I rotate it and then line up the sides, you will see that we create a parallelogram. Therefore, the area of a triangle has to be half the area of the parallelogram or one half the base times the height. All right, so the base of the triangle can be any one of its sides and the height, again, per, uh, perpendicular line from the vertex to that side, the height is the length of the altitude that contains the base. Got it? Now, once again, the base could be any one of the sides, <coughs> and that means sometimes we have to look at things in different ways. Here are a few problems to look at. First one, base is six. Since the uh, uh, right-hand side is, is an altitude, we can just do one half of six times eight. <coughs> Not so the case on the second one, but it's still a base of 11 and a perpendicular side given to us. So we can do one half of 11 times 7 and get our square millimeters out on that one. On this last one, it doesn't give us the bottom side, but it gives us 14 inches for one of the sides, and it gives us the corresponding altitude from that side. So it's as if we're looking at this one sideways, and I've had trouble getting this thing so that I can rotate it. I don't know why. Anyway, if I rotate this guy, you will see that, a weird there, the 14 inch base and the 10 inch uh, height look just fine if we put it that way. All right, area is base times height, but sometimes we have to look at it, turn sideways. Finally, we're going to have problems to do like this one. 
where we got a couple different shapes slapped together. What's the area of the blue figure? Well, if pause, figure it out. Answer coming now. Okay, square is easy. Square is 6 times 6, or 36 square meters here. That's the square part. Now the triangle is going to cause us a little more to think about, okay? Triangle, we got to go here. we got to look at, well, first of all, that length has got to be 6, right? Now, how do we figure out the height of the triangle? Okay, I remember first that for an isosceles triangle, the altitude actually divides the sides into congruent halves, right? So that half is 3. Let me do a little quick erase here. Okay, now we're just looking at the right-hand triangle there that's lined out in green, and we can use the Pythagorean theorem. Okay, so we know 3 squared plus 8 squared must equal 5 squared. Okay, using that, we can solve and we find that h is 4. So the area of the triangle then becomes 1 half. Now, we're taking the whole darn thing again. But if our height is 4, and this entire base is 6, that triangle has an area of 1 half of 6 times 4, 12 square meters. So the total area is found by adding up the area of the square plus the area of the triangle, and we get 48 square meters. All right, hope that makes sense. Hope you have fun with it. We will talk to you later.